Prince Philip was in a dramatic car accident on Thursday afternoon when his Range Rover flipped after collided with a Kia. So why doesn't the Queen need a driving license but Prince Philip does? Prince Philip's crash occurred at 3 p.m. on Thursday, January 17, near the Queen's Sandringham estate. Prince Philip was driving a Land Rover, which collided with a Kia carrying two women and a nine-month-old baby. One woman broke her wrist, and the other cut her knee. The baby was unharmed. The collision, while not said to be the Duke's fault, according to disgruntled residents complaining about the safety of the road, has raised concerns. The Duke is 97 years old, and retiring from public life nearly two years ago, some are asking whether he should still be driving himself. There is no legal limit on driving ages in the UK, but motorists have to renew their license at least 90 days before reaching the age of 70, and then every three years after that. A spokesman for Buckingham Palace told Express.co.uk, Prince Philip has followed all the usual DVLA practices. That means he holds a full driving license and follows the legal procedures for citizens over the age of 70. But what about the Queen? Her Majesty is not required to hold a driver's license. She is the only person in the UK who can legally drive unlicensed and has never had to take a driving test. According to British law, the Queen does not need a driving license because driving licenses are issued in her name. The 92-year-old has been driving since she was 19. The then Princess Elizabeth learned to drive a car at a training centre in 1945 while working in the wartime Auxiliary Territorial Service. The Queen's passion for driving has been well documented over the years, with photos capturing her behind the wheel. Protocol dictates she is normally chauffeured, but Queen Elizabeth is said to be determined to drive herself around when possible. However, this is usually only around her private estates nowadays. The Queen also does not require number plates on any vehicles which are owned by her or any member of her immediate family. Not does she need a passport to travel, she has visited more than 100 countries, all of which she entered without any documentation. The first page of all British passports read, Her Britannic Majesty's Secretary of State requests and requires in the name of Her Majesty all those whom it may concern to allow the bearer to pass freely without let or hindrance and to afford the bearer such assistance and protection as may be necessary. So, of course, if she's the one to issue them, why would she need one herself? There are many reasons one might want to swap places with the Queen. Although Her Majesty undoubtedly puts in a fair amount of hard graft and is still holding down a job at 93 years old, being a monarch has its perks. With house prices having roughly tripled in the UK since 1990, arguably top of the pile is the property portfolio afforded to the Queen, including, but not limited to, Windsor Castle, Kensington Palace, and Sandringham House. To sweeten the deal further, Elizabeth II is worth an estimated £418 million and benefited from a £82.2 million sovereign grant courtesy of the taxpayer this year. While bags of cash and big homes are privileges she shares with other high net worth individuals, Her Majesty enjoys one perk no one else in the UK does. The Queen is the only person in the country who is allowed to drive without a license. Along with her ability to form a government and bestow honours on members of the public, the head of state can and does drive the roads of Britain without having passed her test. As much as Her Majesty's competence in the will has not been called into question, with David Cameron implying the Queen was a dab hand when it came to car control in his new book, a further perk ensures she is free from legal reproach. Unlike every other driver in the UK, the Royal is not required to drive with a number plate. The Queen's demeanor when in the driving seat was the subject of a story earlier this year. According to Shepard Cooper Coles, a former British ambassador to Saudi Arabia, in 2003 the country's then King Abdullah had a fright when he jumped in the passenger seat while visiting Balmoral. What is not surprising is that the aging monarch was taken aback to be driven by woman, given his country's total ban on female drivers until 2018. What seems more unlikely is that the King of Saudi Arabia, a country which regularly crucifies people, was left trembling by Her Majesty's intensity on the roads. Abdullah was not used to being driven by a woman, let alone a queen, 
Mr. Cooper Coles wrote in his book Ever the Diplomat, Confessions of a Foreign Office Mandarin. His nervousness only increased as the Queen, an army driver in wartime, accelerated the Land Rover along the narrow Scottish estate roads. The Middle Eastern royal even asked the Queen, through his translator, to slow down and concentrate on the road ahead.